I'm here today to give you 50 rapid fire tips of things that you probably should know before you start playing Star Valor or they'll help you in the early game of Star Valor. This game is really good. There's not a lot of info, info about it right now. There's a lot of misinformation. I want to make sure I cleared some of the clutter away. I'm not going to bash the game at all. I bought it with my own money so I can be objective as hell. And I want to make sure that today I give you really quick rapid fire tips. I know there's a lot of them, but I'm going to go very quickly and make sure I give you the information you need to maybe decide to either buy the game, avoid the game, wishlist the game, wait for it for later, or make up your own mind, whatever you want to do. All right, let's get into it. First off, before you get going, listen to me for a second because I want to make sure that there's chapters for you to go right through all this good stuff. Now, if you're in someone who wants, wants to get right into the equipment and the ships and the, and the, the trading and mining and all the other stuff, you're probably going to want to go about four or five chapters ahead. If that's not a thing, you just want to know as much as you possibly can. I'm going to go from the very top of the game to a little bit deeper. That way you can see know what you're looking at because a lot of you are not going to have any idea what certain things are. This game is massive, and I mean massive, okay? So before we get into it, let's make sure my face is a little smaller because no one got time for that. So I'm going to move my camera over real quick. Boop, boop, and then shrink it down. Yeah, I know, amazing sound effects. Now the reason I did this, as you can see, there's a little icon right here. There's a row of icons that's going to go across the screen, and my camera being in this position will let you see those icons when I, when I press the corresponding key. It'll turn them on or off, which is one thing I shouldn't tell you about right off the bat. The game lets you hot, turn some items on, turn them off, use them, always on, always off. Your choice, do what you want. Also here, over here, there's a little extra stuff we can all explain. And that way you can see it because my camera might be in a weird spot on certain parts of the game and you're going to be like, what's going on? Okay, now, before we go, thank you for sticking around if you have this far. All right, now here's what we're going to do. I'm going to make a list in the description of all the chapters. It's going to have like a little, I will say, hey, we're going to move on to the next tip from every single item so you can see me going very fast. I'm also going to tell you if it's a new section. I'll say section and then tips. And I'll tell you the name of the section and it'll appear on screen with some nice little text down below. That way you kind of know what you're getting into. And if you want to fast forward from chapter to chapter to chapter and maybe you're on a small mobile device, you can see very quickly what you're looking at. And if you're like, I just want to keep going, feel free. If you want to let it run, that's great too. I'll try to do a couple of these because even though I've gotten 50 pretty good tips because I've got about 20 hours in the game right now and I've been playing the hell out of the game for the last about four or five days. Um, I, I can't cover everything, and we're barely scratching out of early game into, like, mid game. There's going to be people that have much more information on me. There's probably going to be better tutorials. That's all fine, but I just want to give you this. the intention of this video is to see if you want to buy the game yourself, if you want to wish list it and save it for later, if you want to say, eh, it's not for me, this will give you a little bit more information, okay? With that said, the only thing I have to ask is not what you expect. If you're brand new to this channel, you probably know how I'm going to, you don't know how I'm going to do this. If you're not new to this channel, you know what I'm going to say. I don't want to beg for your uh, follow or your sub. What I want to do instead is earn it. At the end of today's video, if you like what I did, you like my presentation, the way I present myself and this information, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button so you can come back. Okay? If you want to hit other buttons, that's totally up to you. I'm not going to beg you or tell, or tell you what to do. I'm going to say you consider it. That's good enough for me. Hopefully it's good enough for you. And that way you're like, this brand new person I've never seen before has asked me to hit buttons. No, no. At the end of the video, when I've given you some value, maybe you consider it then. Okay, now let's get into it. Number one, we're going to go from the top down. We're going to go to the environmental uh, stuff that will affect you a lot. Now, we're on, the, we're on a, a, a station right here, and I'm in the game. And I'm out of ammo, actually, for a reason. But what I want to show you is that there is a sector map. Now, we are... In this little sector, you're going to start off somewhere after the tutorial, and you'll have the sector you're in. Now, the sector is the very first level when you go from this your ship, you press tab, and you're in your sector. Now, these can be much bigger than this. This is about the smallest I've seen. And from sectors, you then go to the sector map. All right? Now, this is sector levels. Now, that little map I showed you is in this one little dot. Now, how many dots are there? Oh, there's a few. Well, there's a lot more. Oh, oh, geez. Oh, God. Oh, more. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's right. This is a medium map. There are options for much smaller. There's tiny, small, somewhat medium, medium, very large medium, large, and unlimited. You should know that. It will affect you. If you want to be like, I wish I could play forever and have a ginormous play style, you can do unlimited. 
And it's actually, it seems to be like each system is vastly different than the other. It depends on how you go. Now, some systems will share certain qualities, like a ship graveyard will have a lot of debris fields and no stations. A asteroid rush, which I'll explain all this later on, will have a lot of asteroids in it and no stations. But then there'll be the Vengi, the alien station. They look very, very alien, but there's not a lot of mining and opportunities because it's very, like, they're very organic-related people. Then you have people like the Children of Terra, lots of asteroids, very few planets because they're, they're on, the, on the run. Stuff like that might apply. The next tip, and we'll figure it out. Now, the first section is going to cover environments. Now, environments are what's in your sector you're currently in. This is called a sector. You're in the sector. The environment here can be everything from just normal space like you're seeing here around me and nothing's happening to all the way being to nebula, which are very foggy, a lot of particulates, to what's called an asteroid rush where asteroids are flowing across your screen very, very, very fast. And if you don't have shield absorbers, your ship's going to get hit lose its shields, lose its armor, and explode eventually. So it won't be hard for you to go into, but you should know they exist to go, what's going on, and save every time you get to a station. Go like that, press escape. Here, I'll show you that real quick before I forget. Make sure you know how to save. It's so simple. Just press G to dock. Once you're done with the information, press escape, save. I would save before you dock because you're going to forget. Make whatever menu works for you or a little list in your brain. Other save, then dock, dock, and save, whatever you want to do. But you have to be undocked to save, so the menu has to go away, okay? Let's go on to the next. Part of the environmental effects that will affect you are lights. Some systems are much darker than others, with stars being very far away from the system primary. With that in mind, you can have a light with the L key. You have to equip it, though, in your actual ship, and on your equipment, you will see down below, you'll have a spotlight with the L key automatically bound. These being upgraded past level one do have a slight effect where apparently according to the developer, I talked to him in one of the um, uh, streams, the beam can get a little, a little longer and a little more brighter. Okay, so people are like, oh, just get a, a white one, it doesn't matter. Eh, maybe, you don't have to go spend ultra amounts of money on it or ultra amounts of gear on it, but it might help, okay? Now, let's move on to the next tip. The next tip will cover nebula. Nebula are part of the environment, and when you see a nebula, what will happen is you'll see this map will be some giant size or whatever size it is. However, to reveal parts of the map, every one of these little squares has to be driven through or, uh, or fl flown through. So it takes a lot longer. There are achievements in the ga game to make sure that you get more experience and get certain perks if you do the best nebulas in the game. I won't ruin it for you, but at least you have an idea now. Okay, let's move on to the next step. Next section will cover sectors. You're in a system, and to get to the sector, you press M, okay? You are then, you get to see all the sectors that are in range. This is your scanning bubble. This is your warp bubble. The sector, they can be out of alignment to whatever degree your equipment allows, but I wanna make sure I mentioned it. So this bubble here, you can see detailed information that's real time about what's going on. It'll tell you what's population, the size of the system, the mineralization of the system, how far away the system is. The most important thing I think is the level, which you can see that number that shows you what kind of tech levels for that system, meaning what kind of enemies you're basically gonna find a range of. Even though it says 34 up here, you still might see some one who's like a level 10, a level nine. You won't, probably won't see above that number though. So you can know if you're gonna test your limits and what level you are, what's going on, okay? so. The first thing, you can write notes about systems. And I've done that already, like right here. And I'm gonna explain this part because it really didn't make sense to me until I saw it. When, when you're in this bubble, okay, your scanner will pick up systems that you can't see normally on the map. The map is huge, as you know. And the reason, to give a quick little rundown, the reason those systems are flashing with the white or pulsing, I have missions to do there. And if you click on a system you have missions to do, the missions will pop up here on the side of sector info, which you can add notes to up here with this button. And I think that's very important. So before I go on to the notes, I selected this system, which there's no gateway into, okay? There's no gateway into it. So you have to actually jump there with your warp drive. That's why you have to go through find the gate and go from one system to another, or if you have a jump drive or warp drive, you can jump over any distance and appear in the middle of the system and go from there. Okay. Sometimes you jump in and you'll have an enemy right next to you or an enemy uh, pirate base right next to you. Be careful. Be aware. Make sure you save before you jump, especially you people that are really crazy and want to do like, you know, hardcore mode and never, and never be able to load your save. Hey, 
God bless you. Be very cautious. Okay. Now the notes allow you to go to a system, select it. Like let's say we're going to select this system, right? Now you see there's no notes. It's spotted. It's level 19. It's small, meaning the map size is small. The population is none. Mineralization poor. If you see a population of none, usually that means there's no star base. Okay. Now if you go to a system you already know about, like right here, it'll tell you things like stations discovered zero in the system. I can go to a system I do know back here called Pitch Black. It is the system, it's the color of the system, okay? It'll be very dark here. The light is required. Remember how about, how about the light? Yeah, you do. Now, in this system, we see we have one station discovered. It's a mining station. We're allied with that station. Asteroid fields discovered so far, zero. Debris fields discovered, zero. So if you fly around and you unveil most of the fog of war, which I'll show you the fog of war quick, this is fog of war. This gray stuff, you've seen it in many, many, many games. Well, for you, it's a personal fog of war. It means you haven't gone over there yet. And as you fly around, you're gonna find things, you're gonna see things. Like right here is an asteroid field at the top with the green pulsing circle right now. Down here is another asteroid field, but it's not named, even though I've driven past it. Why? There are different kinds of asteroid fields. From what I can tell, these asteroid fields respawn, these do not. I could be wrong about that. There's no way to mark them. I asked the dev if there was any way we could personally, like, you know, grab a little marker and dump it on there so if I can come back later on. The only way you can do it now is to maybe figure out the cardinal directions, north, east, south, west, and figure out, like, for this field, I would say, in relation to the system, in the southwest, there is an unmarked asteroid field in my notes. But I'll show you how to do the notes real quick. You press M. Now, we're in this system. I could say, hey, I want a note here. I want to say south west of map there is a asteroid belt unmarked now you don't have to go this crazy there's so many systems you really don't need to go that nuts however if you're someone who's like well i like to buy in a certain system because i'm allied there there's no asteroid rush systems nearby maybe i want to go out there and go crazy and mark every little detail or you're very detail oriented or you just want to be a explore and role play that option go for it there is actually in this game many ways to be an explorer that are actually rewarded so i would say put a little gray marker on it look like this and you'll see a note at the very top which will pop up if you, pop, if you pop it open, it'll pop open the screen. If you just want to hover over it, your text will appear on the map and you can get a very quick indication of what's going on. Okay, let's move on to the next tip. Now the next tip goes back to what I was said about systems without gates. Like these systems here, they are spotted, but there's no jump gate connection. So if you want to make sure you can get the hell out of that system, the game is very generous with what's called energy cells, which are used for your warp drive if you don't have the energy in your batteries. Okay, that's why it says energy cells and batteries right there. This will help save you a lot of time, so please pay attention. Um, if you're going to go there, it takes six energy cells to get there, and of course six to get back. That takes up a lot of space. Some people might go, I don't need, I'll find some there. Don't do that. You can get trapped sometimes, not often, and the game's pretty forgiving about giving you more, but I would recommend if you don't know if there's anything over there to at least bring the energy cells you need, don't trash them, and come back out so you can do like a fishing expedition and find out if you're gonna be able to use the system for whatever you wanna use it for, okay? Let's move on to the next tip. Next tip covers exploring. You can actually, in the game, explore and make it worth your time to explore under perks sorry not under perks i'm sorry under knowledge there is the, the there's these little um shit i'm sorry the name excuse me the different categories will let you actually build up and tell you how to improve them so under here is explore which as you get better, it unlocks more and better bonuses. Like right now I have loot detection one plus 130 on my scanner range to find more loot around the map. Strong signal, spaceships and distress signals are higher and easier to detect, which give you little random encounters. 9.75 faster warp drive charge, almost 10% faster warp drive spool up so you can get out of dodge quicker. And then minus 6.5% warp cost, meaning energy from your batteries or cells rounded up unfortunately okay now i'll tell you in these categories how to improve them i suggest you read them and for this one for exploring it's explore and find special locations and locations are on the map here like where i'm gonna i just found this civilian station and you can see down here space station discovered now every time i unveil more of the fog of war more explore exploration experience will enter my like you can see up above my ship there's plus minus plus two or plus two experience just 15. i'm gonna do this really quick and hopefully I can unveil the whole map for you very, very quickly and show you there's a large bonus at the end of it, okay? So give me one second. 
I'm just gonna fly this over really quickly and um, do a little jump cut, okay? There we go, it just popped up. 1,675 experience, bottom right of the screen for just making sure this whole system is revealed. You can make a lot of experience if, you're, if you have a very fast, quick ship that can outrun almost anything. It's a very quick way to level this skill up. And there is there are perks that if you make ones of your primary knowledge bases actually go to level 25 before everything else, you get a special perk that will allow you, when you make your next run, have other things to have access to. I won't ruin what they are for you, but they make the game more interesting. It's kind of like a roguelike when you, let's say, kill a thousand of a certain enemy, and then you're allowed to have like a certain battle axe that your, your starting character can have access to or build from the get-go. Kind of like that. Okay, let's move on to the next tip. This next tip is about trading quickly. It's kind of a bonus. I didn't want to ruin it too much, but... If you go into the, I'm in the same system right now as I was when I started the video. Now, in this system, there's a, a tin head station and a civilian station. I came from a system through that warp gate, which was basically right here, the 24 ship graveyard, or it was, I think it was the ship graveyard. I can't remember. It might have been, actually, it was over here, 18 or the 16. One of these two systems I warped over here from. Before I left, I decided, okay, you know what? I've been watching people do it. I want to trade. So I bought some gallium. And the good thing about the game, the game will tell you exactly what you bought, the unit price you paid. I don't. That's why they don't combine stacks. When you buy, like, let's say, 10 gallium from 10 different stations, you'll have 10 different stacks in your inventory. And the reason is this tooltip, which helps a great deal. Instead of having this giant database in the game where it has to tell you every little thing about it, what it does, it tells you on the tooltip what you bought the item for and what it's worth currently based upon your assumptions on your trader codex, which is your trading computer. Now, right now, I bought this. Unit price paid is 151 per unit. The price average, this is in the tooltip right over here, is 173. So the unit price here is 180. I could sell the entire stack for one, for $10,812. That's not a lot of money, but if you trade in minerals, and you start making good notes, you can move things around. The market will adjust over time. If you take a lot of, let's say, iron from one station, take it to another, that station eventually won't pay a good price for iron, and the one selling it won't give you for give it to you for cheap. But they do adjust slowly and surely and come back, so you can make little circuits, and there are trade routes in the game that you can establish yourself randomly. Okay, so let's sell this all off. There you go, there's some money, not too bad. And you can go here and decide what you wanna buy. They're going both ways with good cargo can be very very profitable and some of you will be very very good at this and you're gonna make, probably even make a trading guide i'm not going to but i hope that you have some good success with it and it helps you out now uh let's go on to the next i'm gonna try to go a little faster because i know i'm kind of getting a little wordy uh this is about this section is about system information systems are not all the same size as you can tell um we've seen some systems very very tiny and that is on this map right here very 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 small it's up to you what you want to do, where you want to call. You don't really have to have a home, and I would, you really re would recommend not having one system be your base system for a very long time. And so you explore probably a couple hundred, but know that the systems are all different sizes, and that can affect your travel time. Um, it can travel, it can be like if you're just passing through, if there's a good source of trade goods, make sure you take note. And it will tell you, though, on the map itself, like this system here is considered very small. The system up here is small. The system here is very small. Over here we got small small come on give me a, a medium is here that's a, a medium system i'm going to show you by warping here right now i don't have the energy cells let me go do this really quick go to trade energy cell i need one more energy cell buy put the space for it yes i do okay we're gonna go here we're gonna warp here and warp let's warp really quickly now this system as you saw compared to the other one a little different a little bigger that whole other system from the last one would probably be in this little spot okay I think the grid corresponds to the size as you can see. You can make a very accurate determination. I just want to make sure you knew that. Let's go on to the next tip. Tip, stations can usually be found around planets. Not all the time, but there's a very high chance that there's going to be in this system a planet. We already see the mining station there. I already jumped from that gate, went to that station, luckily, because I had it um, randomly on scan, and it showed me there was a station there. Now, I'm going to show you a few ways to use that to your advantage, but let's move on to the next tip. The next tip goes into using stations to your advantage when you get in system. Once you get to a station, as you can see, I'm at this station I just showed you from a few seconds ago. Now this station, if I press G, lets me have a lot of different resources to it. And 
I want to make sure you know that stations are not exactly the same, like certain games where it's just, oh, dock here, get everything, everything the same. No. On faction systems compared to tin heads, they'll give you on the lobby, ship repair, mission board, which is these missions right here, academy, you can actually hire people to work for you as your crew. This is very important because you can assign people to your crew, give them no job, Let's let them sit there in your ship as long as they're in the slot doing nothing that they're qualified for. As long as they don't have a negative, which they can have, they will slowly over time gain experience. It's never a bad thing to slowly be training people up. I don't know if I would start with a white pilot or a green. Blues, maybe. If you're going to move into a ship very soon, it wouldn't be bad to say get a gunner, get an engineer, that kind of stuff, dump them in. But that's part of another tip. Now, when you're in the station, the one thing you can do is go to this thing called contacts. And contacts let you have a little bit of information, but it's not foolproof. In the system, it's very large. We already have the jump gate discovered. I can buy a debris field and a debris field, okay? Now, before I even do that, I know there's two debris fields. I don't know where they are, but now that I do that, I press M. Sorry, tab. I always confuse these. It'll show me a debris field here and a debris field here. A Red Skull battle fleet has arrived. Oh, good. By the way, Factions fight each other and they try to kill each other. This sh system might be destroyed soon. That fleet will slowly make its way in. If I'm sitting here, I can get my ass kicked. Okay, I'm right here. They'll bomb my ship out of existence. So real quick before I do, I'm going to move out over the other side of the system or the other side of the station just to make sure. And I might even help defend because I'm allied with these people. All right, but let's move on to the next tip. Now, part of that station guide information is contacts let you see other things but it's not foolproof i got distracted by the enemy fleet so i could fly it's about half the system on most of these it's about a range kind of like this that the fleet will the station will know you might say okay there's a jump gate here and i'll, I'll show you what i mean we're in this system we know there's two gates okay my ship is flashing right there on my cursor you know there's two gates we see one we see two now this one's for 19, that one's for 26. I've seen it where I'll see a gate up here, there's another gate, but I can't find it. It's on the other side of the system, like down here. The system, the, the stations sometimes have a range of their knowledge. So it's not perfect to go to a station and say, let me just know all this stuff's here. Screw it, I'm not going to buy it. It's not bad, though. You can go into the contacts and say, hey, before I spend any money, is there anything else here? And they might know the location of the station. They might know the location of asteroid fields, debris fields. They might know the station of a mercenary hideout or a pirate hideout. It's up to you if you want to spend the money. Some of you are going to get to the point where you have so much money, you're just going to go, give me the nearest station. I don't care. I'll just press the contact thing, give them some money, and not have to fly everywhere. Great. Some of you want to explore it all and get the experience. Not bad of you. Okay? Let's move on to the next tip. Now, the next tip is very quick, but I want to make sure you're aware of it. Systems can have ast what's called an asteroid rush. An asteroid rush means on this map here, this little sec uh, space station view, you will see asteroids moving across very, very, very fast. Okay? Now, for some capital ships, that's no big deal. For ships of our class or in the early game, that can be death. So if you see a system up here, let's say like this, and it's very rich, and there's no gates in, and there's a population of none, with very rich mineral, that might that might mean there's one. I'm gonna go pour, warp up there really quick to show you this to make sure you know how bad it can be. Give me a second. Let's go in. All right, let's go jump into the asteroid rush and see how it works. Here's a rush. Warp. As you can see, there's some asteroids here. I'm not sure they're gonna hit me. Now they do hit me and they do hurt me, and this is an asteroid rush. As you can see down here on the bottom, they are moving forward and they will hurt you as they hit you. I already lost half my shields. Now some of you are like, oh, that's perfect. I don't have any shield absorbers. They recharge pretty quickly, but every time we move around, we are getting a little bit of experience from unveiling some stuff on this map size. Map size is pretty big, you can see it, but you can't hide behind anything. I'm already dying. I want to show you guys this, okay? I'm warping out because I don't want to die. I should have saved that. Near miss karma perk. Yeah, there's perks in the game for almost everything. You shouldn't look under here if you don't want spoilers, but I'm going to show you some of them. Near miss. Escape from an asteroid rush alive. Strafe speed plus 1.8 per second. Gold rush. Obtain four different metals from a single asteroid. Basic ore doesn't count. Plus 12% mining speed. This is what I was talking. Hard working. Reach level 25 in geology before having 25 in any other knowledge. This can only be unlocked one time. So per playthrough. So if you're like, I want to do this for exploration, you see what I mean when I said roguelike? There we go. 
Let's move on to the next tip. The next tip is a section on loot. So I wanna make sure you know how looting works. That way you can make sure it works to your advantage. Loot in the game that drops. If I jettison a container right now or an item, will only last for five minutes. That means also if you go buy it in system, if you fly past it and there's random junk out there, I don't know if that falls under the same exact laws, but five minutes is all it'll last, okay? So if you blow up a pirate and he has a bunch of loot inside of his hold, you've got five minutes to scoop it up. So that means if you're like, well, I'm gonna mine the asteroid belt and destroy all the asteroids, all this ore is gonna be sitting there in the field until you pick it up, you've got five minute countdown starting, okay? So please be aware of that. I do not know if you pick an item up and dump it back down, if it refreshes, you're more than welcome to tell me, I don't actually know, okay? Now, loot can be found scavenged from other ships, taken randomly buzzing through space with ancient relics, or sitting inside of certain areas like debris fields, hideouts, and pirate places. Now we're gonna see a little bit of a battle here. I wanted to show you this because one thing that does not happen, you might be like, how does loot work when NPCs, as you can probably tell, are fighting each other? Well, the way it works is pretty simple. We're just gonna help out. If we put any damage at all on any of these guys, we will get a loot if it drops, okay? There'll be loot dropping, which will be a part of the part, 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 yeah, partake of. So be aware of that, and don't be like, well, what's going on? Well, now this big cruiser up here, I'm putting down, and you can see the little, little shit. Trying to help out a little bit without getting hurt too much. Now the, the allies are helping me for repair, trade, I don't need one thing, drone parts. Oh, I can repair myself. Now the enemy looks like they're winning, so I'm gonna get out of here. I think they're gonna kill that station, that's why I, I would do that repair really quickly. That mining station will die, and when it dies, you can't use it anymore. At the moment in the game, you cannot recover stations, and the stuff in them will go away. So there you go, There's a, there goes that system. And right here it says, Proxima Mining Company no longer controls this sector. So that's all right. Just making sure I get this guy off my butt. Those missiles can hurt you. Okay, so. I, I didn't mean to show you that part, but it does happen. Um, and factional warfare is a huge thing. The Red Skull Pirates don't like me. I tried to help out the Proxima Mining Company or the Syndicate. Knew I tried to do it. I can't get any higher with the Proxima people, but the Syndicate was like, hey, they're the traders. Compared to the mining company who are the miners, they were like, hey, thanks for trying, man. Which I think is really cool. All right, let's move on to the next tip. Another part of this, I can't find one at the moment. I've been looking around a little bit. Um, you can actually find floating ships in space. What will happen is, just like loot, you will see a blue blip on your bottom radar. And if you have good radar, uh, under tab, like see my little range here, I can see anything in that range. And you can go up and down the system if you feel like it and scout around looking for a, um, for little signals. And you'll say, hey, I'll a distress signal or a anomaly has been detected. And if you fly over it, you'll see a ship there. The way you get the ship back is what is called a tractor beam, not a collection beam. There is a warp collector or warp towage beam that lets you go through systems, but the tractor beam lets you go over to it very slowly, press like a button, I think it's a hop map of two, and it'll actually throw the tractor beam on the ship, and you can tow it within system to a station to sell it or collect it and keep it. However, if like you just saw with the station exploding, if the system station goes away, I believe you lose your ships inside of it too, as well as any loot that was stored in the station. So be aware of that before you make this, this giant base and throw all this stuff into it, it can go away. That's why having a more of a nomadic life until you know what you want to do is a good thing. All right, let's move on to the next tip. Now, part of that destruction in the next in this tip will cover destroyed stations. If I had gone up there and shot that station even once, which I didn't do because I have very good uh, relations with those people, I'm actually allied to them, you can actually pick up some of the loot. So if you're allied with a faction, like there's a, a ship right there, and I can't believe we found that for the last tip, but I'll show it to you really quickly. This is a Fury. I don't know if I can actually pick it up, though. That is a ship. I'm not trying to do that to it. But do I actually have a tractor beam installed? I actually don't know. I... do not. So I don't have it, and I also don't have the warp one. This is a ship you can go grab, you can take it back to station, and you can own it, you can sell it. Your choice, all right? Now, it is worth to do this usually. If you see a blue ship, a green ship, they are rare and they have extra little things. If you're like, how does that work? Well, 
under, if you go to a station and do it, I can show you some extra slots very shortly. There's actually things called enhancement slots, and they usually have more of them, okay? Now, uh, let's go to, actually, yeah, I'll go to the next tip. The next tip covers perks. Perks, in-game, are under the skill, skill progression um, and perks, okay? These things synergize together. Knowledge gives you some of them once in a while, but usually it's as perks will come in from some of the skills you've taken. Knowledge unlocks some. Skills are a different set, but they all kind of, this whole page is your character, okay? And under here, as you get certain things unlocked under these trees, if any tree hits 10, like the engineering is 10, and mine for mine, business will be 10 soon. Usually, two categories will meet up and give you an extra perk that you do not have to put a point into. Unfortunately, I didn't know this when I started, engineering and business do not have a, a perk down here that actually meets up. There's nothing that says business and engineering, which that would be kind of cool, but I can understand why it didn't. Exploration and business, exploration and social, but no engineering and business. Developer, if you're watching this, I would love to have some kind of little perk for me for, or for the people who went this route, because this route started off as trading and exploring and then became a tra uh, trading, mining, and combat. So I screwed up, but that's on me. So let's move on to the next tip. The next tip covers perks that make looting better. And I want to show you a few things. If you don't want to hear this next piece, I would close your ears, but it's, I don't think it's that hard to understand it because a lot of people would never know about it unless you tried. There's going to be an item in the game called junk. It's literally called junk. It is useless. However, if you take junk in your inventory and then go down here and select it and press the destroy button or destroy all button, the junk will be destroyed. If you do that again and again and again and again, eventually over a certain period of time, randomly, you will unlock a perk called the trap. The, I think it's something like the janitor. And the janitor will let you get free items out of the junk when you destroy it. So if you like collecting things anyway and getting and making the maps cleaner, this might be something for you. Also under perks, um, you will see it right here. Uh, where is it? The real space janitor. Destroy 200 units of junk. Sometimes you find cool stuff in the trash. This works, by the way, by taking a stack of trash, meaning junk, in your inventory, in your ship, and pressing destroy all. The bigger the stack, the higher the chance you might get something good. It's not game breaking. It's just something a lot of you are going to be like, oh, I wish I had known that before. Kind of like it's the whole reason of this entire video. Uh-huh. Let's move on to the next tip. Just to show you guys this. Um, I was flying around to get to the next part of my, my video, and at the very top of the map, I don't think, you can see a little dot there, it's a distress signal that popped in. I'm going to show you what happens when that pops in. Can I think of it like a bonus tip. Um, I want to make sure that I um, show you how this works. Now, distress signal. You arrive at the signal source location and finally a debris field is lift. Now, this is perfect. I wanted to show you this. It's going to be a little out of order, but... When you find something like this, the game developer actually kind of tr does a little bit of a tricky thing to you, and I think it's wonderful. In the background, you see these beautiful backgrounds, but you never have any use for them, right? Well, not here. The thing about this one, if you look behind me in the, uh, in the, uh, the background, you will see there's, a, there's debris, but we have no, no need for it right now. Some of you already saw it happen down below on the radar over here. Watch what happens. Um, let's see if I can find it. This is why you want to go to searchlight. The searchlight, you can see this piece right in front of me. You can see little sparks coming off it. This is, I think it's important to tell you this because I didn't know this until the developer actually pointed out and said, do you not see that? I'm like, what are you talking about? I thought it was background um, uh, scenery or like, you know, an effect that this was like, you know, you've ever seen like a river running in a game or uh, twinkling stars. Well, I thought it was part of the destroyed stuff being sparking. No. As soon as you get to it, on the, down here you can see it, debris field 26. This debris field, as far as I'm aware, will never go away. And I'm, I even asked the developer, I'm like, please give me a way in this system to put a marker down that I can come back here now that I did the work to find it and come get it. I think they are static once you find them. So if you want to mark them, go for it. And sometimes they'll be worth it. As you get higher level, they won't be. But this is level 26. You press J and out comes hidden loot. And we got a flux accumulator. Not amazing, but I don't have that. I can scrap it since I have no knowledge of the system at all. Flux is used in charging weapons or other devices. I am going to equip it just because I don't have one right now. And the other items I've been finding are just random junk or, or mission rewards. Let's move on to the next tip. The next tip has to do with storage. And a lot of people don't really understand how this works. I didn't want to put storage up front because it's just like, do I really want to make a game with a lot of charts and a lot of complexity look even more 
complex or a little boring of a first item. Item, not tight, I'm sorry. Um, I'm getting right kind of tired. But here's how it works. Storage in the game is global in certain aspects and not in others. God damn, my ship doing this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, well, actually, we should do this really quick. We'll grab some missions really quickly. You decide what you want to do. Blue crystals, um, debris analyzer 3.0. Wow. Scavenging loot plus 60%. I'll accept that too. I'll grab the debris analyzer. Let me know her as pirate. It's just, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of stuff in the background while I'm talking to you guys. Requires space pilot 18. I can't do that one. So here's how storage works. Inside the station, you'll have your trade stuff that you can buy and trade. You'll also have your hangar. And you'll have equipment on your ship, weapons on your ship, pilots on your ship, passengers on your ship. And then you'll go down to here and you'll have all the stuff in your hangar. Now in your hangar, you have the ship cargo, as you can see up top, very simple. But then you have in station, resource stash, weapon stash, and equipment stash in gray. Now, the way this works, I want to make sure you're aware. This is going to affect you miners, you traders, and you hoarders. Now... What will happen is ship cargo is what you hold in your cargo hold. Very simple to understand. In station is what's in the station itself. However, you have to come back to it. If the station is destroyed, your items are lost. As you can see in the station before I even got here, I had some items sitting here. Not the greatest, but I'll load them up just so I can get rid of them later on. Now, if you want to take certain items, and I highly recommend you do, take all your items and you can put deposit all all the way through them. They will go into the station. If you're like, I don't know what I can store, hit deposit all on all your items. I wouldn't do your ammo, your energy cells, but everything else, and then find out what can go where. Now, we're going to look at ours. I'm going to equip this thing. There you go. I just put that on. Um, we have a bunch of here. I'm going to go to medium laser beam. I'm going to scrap that real quick. Um, I'm not going to scrap that, actually. I'll do this later on. So I'm going to deposit all, like I said. I'll skip over to uh, transmitter. Deposit all. Drone parts or something I do have to do this to. But I did that for a reason. Now, if you looked... Our giant ship cargo went down to only four items in the station, everything down here out of the resource stash, equipment, or weapon stash. And you should do that on every item you're not sure about, so you're not carrying around stuff you don't need to carry around. Crafting components are global. It's a quality of life improvement. The developer knows that he either has to make the cargo holds ginormous, and you're holding all kinds of stuff, and you get very angry, or to say, screw it, we'll put it on a global stash so you don't have to worry about it. You can't do that with trade goods. You can't, you can't sell gold and minerals and stuff like that there, but you can put on crafting components, which when you're trying to build all of these items, which by the way, you can, and you can upgrade them farther and farther and farther with upgrade kits, even farther, you really should have access to your minerals and your components and the stuff, the, the, the base component you want to use. So not having it be a complete asshole move, like, I don't want to say talk bad about those games, but like Elite Dangerous and EVE Online, will have where you have to go from one station 50 miles away or 50 parsecs away, go get one item, fly to another system, get this other item, fly to yet another system, and the entire time you don't have a functional ship because you can only pilot one ship at a time. It's highly annoying. It's really anno It can get you killed, and it's not fun. So the developer goes, screw that. You're already a one-man army as it is, or a one-woman army, or a one-person army, so... Why don't we make it where it's a little bit easier, okay? And now you know how storage works. Let's move on to the next tip. The next tip covers trading. It's a section on trading, okay? So one thing you might want to consider if you want to make a lot of money very quickly, which can boost your level, which might not make you happy, but you'll have a lot of cash, is trading. Now, I wanted to make sure I found something that's actually good, decently priced. This item here is titanium. As you can see from the Trader Codex in the middle of the screen, the average price we've seen is 99.5 per item. This is 84.94. We're going to fill cargo with it. We're now 43. Now, in station, we do have some drone parts and some other stuff, but I'm okay with that. So what I'm going to do is take the missile ammo here. I have too much of it, so I'll, I'm going to load the drone parts. I'll load more if I can. There we go. And we're going to go to the next system or the next station in the system while I talk to you about this. Now, if you get a trader codex that is... Oh, there's junk, of course. Now, junk will come out like this. Here, I want to show you what I mean. Junk, destroy all, destroy all. It'll keep My beam will keep bringing it in and trying to make more of it. Okay, so we just killed all of it. Nothing popped out, so we didn't get anything from it. Now, at the next station, we're going to try to trade the titanium. It may not be easy, but some of you that are like, I can make a big ship. I've seen ships with 390 cargoes very quickly. It's not the easiest to get, but if you're working your butt off for it, you can see it. 
I'm gonna go down here. Dead zone means it's the outside of the start of the sector. So this map is like this, but you can go outside of it as far as you want. You won't find anything and you won't reach the next system. And the game even tells you that. All right, let's go to G for Doc. Now we did complete a quest. We're gonna go to now contacts. There's a pirate base here that I haven't seen yet. I'll, I'll pay for the mission or pay for them. The academy, there is someone here. Uh, advanced supervisor and navigator. She's, they're pretty good. I can't bring them in because I don't have fleet command or space pilot level 32. So it's a it's a it's a balancing act with that. Like I said before, but let's go to trading like we meant to do. Now titanium. If I sell it here, it's 78. I bought it though for 84. It's a bad deal. It's not worth selling. I would look over here and see that there is silver here cheaper. Cobalt, mm, too much titanium. A little cheaper than almost we bought it. But it's not worth doing. So at least you know. Now, if you get a trader codex, which if you go to G and you go to your hangar and you go to your equipment, you will see what's called a trader codex. If I can find it in front of me right there. If you can get a level three trader codex, meaning a trader codex 3.0, and you should as soon as you can. Not a 1.0 upgraded to purple. That's not the same thing. Trader Codex 3.0. If you see it, even if it's white or gray, buy it. Okay? You can upgrade it later on. That one will tell you if the item you're looking at in the station right here under trading, these items will have a different, the, the, the price will be a different color. It won't all be yellow. It'll be Actually, I think it might be the name of the item might actually turn a little bit, or maybe it's just the price. One of the two. I think it's the price. We'll turn from yellow, flat yellow to red, a bad deal. Green, a really good deal. Yellow, okay deal. Orange, a yeah, kind of bad deal. To a lighter shade of lime green, an okay deal. And instead of having to go figure out what's good, what's not, and remembering in your head all the different numbers, the Trader Codex does the job. It'll also tell you if you scroll over it what's going on. Prices without margin trading. Um, average, how many stations you've seen? Like mine says 22 stations. I've been to 26 stations that sell cobalt for this one. For titanium, I've seen 34 stations with this one. Trading is a very viable thing. And I will give you a bonus tip at the end of this video that might help you a lot. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I want to make sure that if you don't want spoilers, it's at the end of the video and you can all say, hey, spoilers ahead. Don't go any farther. Let's move on to the next tip. The next tip covers mining in relation to trading. You can mine heavily and make a lot of money very quickly. However, it is not the most fun thing to watch. Some people hate mining with a purple passion. You might be one of those people. So I want to make sure I cover it really quickly. You can mine with a ship with a giant cargo hold, fill the whole thing up. You can have a refinery in your ship. Let's see if I go to your hangar. I have an advanced mobile refinery on my own ship because I became I started mining from materials I needed to craft items, not because I wanted to make a bunch of money. I figured I can do enough missions if I'm fast enough and run around enough that I can get away from mining. The game does make it where all fact all professions kind of work together in a certain way. You don't have to be all of them perfect but you at least have to know the basics of how they work they did a very good job of tying them together so it's not annoying but even the most crazy trader will probably have a mining ship the craziest combat focused guy will have a mining ship to get some materials you don't have to you can fly around and blow up stuff and do missions for rewards and randomly find them and buy them on station markets you probably wouldn't have to but I want to make sure you knew how it works. And especially with the other tips before, putting all the stuff into storage, the resource cache, if you see anything here on the side, from here down, anything in there is stuff you can dump into your station for your global stash, rather. And the global resources are what you use for crafting items, new weaponry that you don't even know about yet, modifying existing weaponry, and upgrading weaponry from higher colors, from white to gray, gray, to green, green, to blue, blue, to purple. I don't think you can make orange. Orange is the ultimate thing you can find. It is Apex. Now, some of you people that used to play WoW are like, oh, no, 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 stop, 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 stop. Now, you can do it, but it takes some time, okay? It takes a certain set of skills. And I want to make sure I show you that one skill because I kept forgetting. Under perks, no, not perks, under, what is it, skills, there is a skill called Master Scavenging. That's why I went down this tree. The first one is scavenging, 100% faster scavenging, and 100% scrap metal loot found. 
Number two, expert scavenging. 10% chance to find a refined metal when scavenging and 75% chance to obtain special items. Special items can be equipment, trade goods, or craft materials. So if you're a combat guy and you get engineering because you're gonna probably need it for all the stuff, having these two skills together lets you find a lot of crafting mats without having to mine. Number three though is master scavenging. Plus one rarity level for items obtained through scavenging. So with all of this scavenging stuff I have, later game as they get the higher systems, if a purple should pop out, plus one, ding, you get an orange. Okay, that's how that works. And it'll help you save a lot of time. Okay, now you don't have to do this, but it does help. Um, there might be debris scanning, reveals debris fields in the sector with exploration engineering combined. If I get three more points of exploration, I just go into the system and I see all of them. You should read every single perk, every single skill, every single stat, every single knowledge, everything you can. Like right now on mining, because I'm not going to cover mining too much, geology-based mining is up here, and there's three categories for it. As you mine more and more and more, you get higher geology levels. As you get higher geology levels, as you hit the level, you can see level 22 right there, right about... Eh, Kind of like where my finger going down that way. You'll see gold at level 22. That means if I mine an asteroid now, I have a chance to get gold out of it. However, if I was level 21 as a character or 21 in geology and I mined it, I couldn't get it. That's why you see ex you see question marks here going, huh? Huh? What? You don't know what it looks like. You don't know what you're looking for. It'd be like someone going into a river with a, a pot, grabbing a bunch of dirt going, well, that's mud, throw that away. And there might be tiny trace amounts of everything from gold to silver, who knows, but they don't know what they're looking for. To them, it's useless, they throw it away. Same principle applies. Let's move on to the next tip. Next tip is actually more of a, um, you might want to stay around to the end of the video. At the end of the video, to avoid spoilers, I put a bunch of tips that'll kind of spoil some parts of the game for a lot of you. And I want to make sure it's in relation to trading. It's very good. You're going to want to know it if you want to save a lot of time. Now, and the only reason I do these kind of tips in that relation, not everyone has 50, 60, 100, 300 hours to play a game. Some people are very much, you know, they have a life, they have a wife, a husband, a partner. They have a career that's very demanding. Some of you are still going to school, going back to school, continuing education. You have children. You have sick parents, sick, sick people you're taking care of, so on and so forth your life is very, very busy. I make these kind of videos, and sometimes at the very end, I put that little section in the back there to make sure you know I'm trying to give you some convenience because I do this as a full-time job. I've got, even with my schedule, I can only throw 20, 30 hours a week into a game, and I wish I could do more. I could no-life it and have no life, but I don't think that's healthy. After I, I'm about to hit 42 years old, I don't hide my age from anyone, and I don't want to do that anymore. I did that with EVE Online for 11 years, played on typical 40 hours a week. It was great. Learned a lot about the game. That's not the typical player, and I don't think it should be. So I'm going to give you at the end of this video a bunch of little, I want to call them spoiler tips, whatever you want to call it, but that way I'll have a giant disclaimer that don't continue, don't continue. If you don't want to have it spoiled, you want to f go through the exploration yourself and figure little parts out, okay? So let's go to the next tip, but keep that in mind. It's coming. The next section covers faction tips let's go into that really quickly now if you become allied with a faction and how do you know which faction you're allied with well you go to stats under the c key is stats and you look at the, the factions you know about there's proxima mining company the syndicate the red skull pirates Vrengi, the children of terror and technomancers now here's how this works as far as i'm aware so far these are the only people in the game now the proxima mining company are the miners the Syndicate are the traders. The Red Skull Pirates are the pirates. The Vengi Ascension are the people that killed the Terrans. And the Children of Terra are the rebels who are fighting against Vengi. They're the humans. Technomancers are people that I don't really know the story of, but they are people that will give you um, blueprints and purple items in their stations, if you can find their stations. So, as you can tell, I have a little bit of difference with each one of these. One is allied. That is the highest level you can possibly get. This will make sure that your trade prices are 9% cheaper with anything you buy on their stations. This includes equipment, trade goods, ammo, even I think it applies to people you hire off of their stations. Service costs, 30% cheaper means repairs. I don't know if it applies to 
crafting or anything like that, but I think it's just doing things like repairs. Syndicate is friendly one step below. No, I'm sorry, one step below is Vengi. Now, they are 9% cheaper. The Vengi are 6% cheaper. Services are 20% cheaper. I'm really glad this worked out this way. It kind of shows you the step down, 30, 20, 10. And the Vengi, I'm honored with. They're like, hey, we really like you. Would you join us? And I'm like, no, because the minute you become allied with the Vengi or the Children of Terror, the other side will start attacking you. So knowing that, make that, de that the decision yourself. It's part of your mission log to choose which way you want to go. You don't have to. I chose not to. I like the, the neutral path because I can go to both sets of stations. It doesn't make entire swaths of terrain really bad. Now, I just saw something, a... Um, Ancient Relic is right next to me. And if you see this, I'm really glad this popped out. Make sure you go after these all the time. They are very rare, and they are basically a free upgrade kit, including making blues into purples, which is very rare. I would not use your Ancient Relics. If you go to your um, hangar, and you go to your gear, you'll have Ancient Relics, and you will also have on a crafting. Now, this is part of a, a tie-in for some stuff. It's not part of the factional stuff, but you'll have upgrade kits. You'll have improved upgrade kits, and then past upgrade, uh, upgrade, advanced upgrade kits or improved upgrade kits will be ancient relics. Make sure if you're going to upgrade an item, let's say you're going to upgrade this de this demolition missile launcher. If I want to upgrade it, it says ancient relic will be consumed to, to upgrade selected item to a demolisher missile launcher, the blue one. If you buy the blue here, it's color coded. You won't use your ancient relic. It'll tell you before you hit the key what's going to be consumed. Please do not waste your ancient relics, which are incredibly rare. In this 20-hour playthrough, I think all total, I've maybe found 18 of these things. And I've been looking. Every time I see it, I'll even stop in the middle of a fight and go get one if I don't die. Or, you know, just be like, hey, let me get that. I'll fight you in a second. They're that rare. Consider them purple upgrade kits. You can do other stuff to it. However, I would be very, very selective. Okay? If it's like a tier one basic mining laser that's blue, you probably don't want to upgrade that to purple. If you have a tier four mining laser beam that does like 13% damage to asteroids, that might be an upgraded to purple might be a better solution. And remember, there are tiers to gear. I'll get to, get to that in a second. For the faction stuff, um, I think that's it. Let's go on to the next. Now, I kind of screwed up the last one. I'm going to go, I'm going to try to cover this a little bit more. If you go back to factions under stats, you have 9% for uh, allied, 6% for honored, 3% for friendly. Neutral does nothing. They don't give you any discounts. Then you have a 30, 20, and 10% cheaper thing. Now, I don't know even sure why the Red Skull Pirates are hated. 6% uh, higher prices and 20% higher service cost. If you try to go to their station, they're not going to let you in anyway. So I'm not really sure how that works. And right now we're negative 3,800 uh, faction rep out of negative 3,000 we hated. I think there's even a step past that, but I'm not sure. It probably goes to 9,999 negative. So keep this in mind. If you can get these people higher, this will affect your trading and your combat. Because if you have like trade prices with the Proxima Mining Company, I should be going up to the mining company and buying everything I can and trading between their stations. Um, and then taking them nearby to other stations that are not allied and selling them to them. It just nine percent cheaper along with skills you can get up to 15 16 20 percent off a single item at a proxima mining station with the way this is syndicates is the th third one if the vangi come in they're not bad either let's move on to the next section now this one is, is faction related so i want to make sure i say this in the game you can press c or is it e uh c and you can go to, where is it? Stats, okay? Stats will show you your reputation with the the people that are out there. Um, it shows you that there are people that you can't really see called the Technomancers. The Technomancers have what's called Tin Head Stations. And this is a Tin Head Station. The Tin Head Station is very useful, and here's why. It doesn't have the normal um, missions, it doesn't have trading for items, but it does have trading for blueprints, and the weapons you find here will usually, and equipment will be purple. The sh they don't sell ships, goods or blueprints, equipment. I already bought the equipment out, but it was two purple components. They seem to give you very, very, very good stuff. So if you can find a tin head station, mark it on your map like I'm going to. Like I showed you for five seconds. We're going to go here. We're going to go to the, our notes. And we're going to say tin head station. 
That way it's nice and prevalent. I'm going to put a yellow and orange oranges marker on it for the tin heads. Actually, if they're probably yellow, do that's a better way to do it. Okay. Now, I do have some other ones that color. Make sure you figure out whatever you want for your colors. But please rem remember, these people let you sell your extra blueprints. Okay. When you have extra blueprints, you can come here and you usually get about a thousand. Since I have um, some trade skills, I can buy them for a little less and I can sell mine for a little more. Okay. So I have like my blueprints here. You can see the unit price. Is down to 987 i guess maybe it might be because i bought them here i can't like cycle them into the station i bought them from but i bought three blueprints i needed heavy lasers medium laser beams battle computers this is just whatever the roll the dice rng wise please make sure if you see a tin head station always visit it every little bit of time you might get something good all right let's move on to the next tip next section covers ship equipment and upgrades and you should know how this works to save a bunch of time now you're going to go into your stations, except for, I think, the Tin Head stations. You're going to always come to the lobby. You're like, yay, the lobby. This is awesome. Great. Now, one thing you should do is you go to trade. I always go to trading first, okay? But crafting section down here will let you see something. Some things you might not even know. Now, under this crafting tab, there's custom weapons, blueprints, and ship enhancements. Now, under blueprints, you'll see your weapons. You'll see your engineering. You can turn these things on or off. That's, what, that's how they work. If you want to see all the weapons, you turn off everything else. If you want to see just gear, you turn on that one, leave everything else off. If you want to see ship components, you go here. If you want to see ships themselves, you can build, you go there. Okay, it wasn't really clear to me how that worked. I want to make sure you're aware of it. Now, one thing that'll save you a bunch of time is going right into components. And under components, so I'll just do this so you can see it. Um, where is it? Is it not that one? No, the components are there. Um, components start from like a tier system. They go from the basics all the way up to the most advanced. So white all the way up to purples. Now, to make it simple on you, a lot of you are gonna find iron ore and scrap metal everywhere. Scrap metal is not junk. Make sure you keep that burned in your brain. Scrap metal is basically scrap component parts. Think of like wires, solder, little microchips, tiny little things that by themselves, it's scrap. It doesn't really matter but you add it all together with a lot of stuff and you can make very advanced components. It's a building block component. It's your very bottom component. Junk is not, scrap metal is. There are different things, keep that in mind. The next thing is base components that go from there. Scrap metal and three iron. Three scrap metal and three iron equals one base component. Base components right here can be stored in the, in the resource stash. Iron cannot. So if, you're, if you have a bunch of iron because you're a miner, and there's a station nearby, take your iron to the station. You're like, oh, they're not going to buy my iron. Darn. What do I do with it? Do I destroy it? No. Take your iron, get your scrap metal out. You don't even have to pull it out. You can just go down here to build in bulk, and you go build in bulk. Now, I'm going to show you how this works. We're going to go to iron. There's a lot of it. We're going to buy, since I have, what do I have for scrap metal? I have over 300 scrap metal. We're going to buy 100. There you go. I just bought 100, 100 scrap or 100 iron, okay? Now, this is for a reason. You can see it over here. It's a lot of weight. It's one space per. That's a lot of space. Okay. Now we're going to go to crafting. We're going to go to base components, which I have 27 base components. I kind of need to do this anyway. And it says build times 10. Okay. Now look, base component 27 right there. There's none up here. You get experience for that. Now it's three times each, but still we used a bunch. Scrap metal went down by 100. Iron disappeared. And now we have 12, 21 base components there. We're going to store this in real quick. Um, they went in the thing. I thought they were going to go to the station. Deposit all might want to go down to this. Um, have a deposit station button versus deposit all button, but whatever. That's okay. So the base components are now mine, and I can do with them what I want. Now, I have to load it all here, and then I can deposit it down to the station itself. Um, where's base components? Deposit all. Ancient relic, deposit all. Drone parts, keep in. Vulcan energy cells, microchips. Um... Yeah, so the next part of this really quick, the reason I told you that upgrade kits require base components and microchips. I bought some microchips in advance, but upgrade kits are going to take your white and gray items to green items. They're the number one thing. Do not use ancient relics. Did I get that through to you enough yet? I've said it a lot in this video. Do not in any way, shape, or form take a ancient relic, which is rare as hell, and upgrade anything but a blue to a purple. Okay, there's no upgrade from blue to purple you can craft. 
you only can find ancient relics. So keep that in your mind. It'll make your life so much easier compared to when you go, oh man, I can't upgrade my guns. I have four blues. I only have two ancient relics. I have two purples and two blues. That's all kind of weird. How does this work? Now you know, okay? So upgrade kits, I just built 10 of them. The, the, the um, improved upgrade kits, however, take micro uh, chips as well. I'll buy 10 of those. Now crafting, upgrade kits take five base component, two refined metal, two microchips. The refined metal, you have to either mine for it or find it. You cannot buy it that often as I've ever seen. Once in a while, you'll see it on the market. If you go to trade, the reason I go to trade, every time I dock, there are sometimes components in here like um, resource stash components that you can buy for like one to 10 of them. Scrap metals on there, I buy scrap, I buy um, any crystal I ever see any kind of refined metal, anything over here I need, I buy it, put it in my ship, then put it into the deposit as soon as I can. Please, it'll make your life very simple. There's nothing worse than going, I have this brand new ship. It's so good. It's amazing. And you finally get into it and all your gear, because it's a higher class, is white and you can't upgrade it really far. You can go like blues and some whites are like, ah, shit, I don't have the components. I don't have the refined metal. I don't have like um, the ancient relics i need so much and you have to get stuck in this loop of going and buying stuff mining stuff sitting there going oh when will this end when can i go back to what i like to do so if you're going to upgrade you might want to start getting the components as well as the equipment as well as the weapons upgrading those weapons inside your inventory and then dumping them in your stash and having some blues or even purples ready to go if you need it okay so now that you know how upgrade kits and improved upgrade kits work Hopefully it'll save you a bunch of time and ha heartache, okay? Now, this piece here, sell that off. Uh, all the upgrade kits are there. Did I not build the improved? I did. There's 10 more. Now we got five improved upgrade kits and five upgrade kits. That means I could take five white items, if I wanted to, to blue, to blue quality with just those. If I have the, f the five ancient relics, I could take five white components and make them five purples. Don't do that unless you actually are sure what you're doing. At least you know now, okay? Let's move on to the next tip. Next tip covers ship sizes and how they work. Each item in your ship in two different ways, equipment and weapons will take different sizes. My ship is a, right now a shark. It has 55 slots for equipment. For weapons, it has 16, I'm only using nine. The nine, however, are broke up among the turrets. So you have to figure out how much. If you put like two, 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 and three, you've got most of it covered, okay? I think you know how this works. I'm just making sure, but that, that was forest turrets, all total can only add up to 16, okay? You can unbalance your ship as much as you want with weapon, a giant cannon on one side and a small pea shooter on the other. That's totally up to you, and it's perfectly fine to do whatever you want as long as the t actual slot, like right here, this slot only has, see how it has a two next to it? That means two tons of weapons or two size of weapons and now you know how that works now please keep that in mind because there's nothing worse than trying to go i'm going to buy this amazing mining ship and i'm going to make craftable weapons that are six size and the turrets that they want to use in that ship are four please just keep track just keep track okay let's move on to the next tip the next tip actually goes in the next i'm going to move into the next section because i combined the last two tips together this next tip is for energy control as you see on my ship down here and why i put my my camera over here we have energy control right here now some people are like i have to keep everything at 100 percent, and only in bad situations do i boost it to 200. Mm, no no you don't now you will mess around with your power and your um what's going on but if you have enough power with enough gear you can actually keep your ship at a very high level it just reduces your energy recharge rate for your entire batteries. Be careful of this. Like you don't have to be at 200%. In fact, I'll move everything back down just so you can see it. That's 150% for all of those. Please be very aware of what you're doing. I've seen people stay at 100% and their ship has like plus 60 energy. And I'm like, why don't you go to 150? And they're like, oh, I only do that in co during combat situations. And I'm sitting there going, why? and they don't have an answer. Now, is it perfect? No, it's, I'm not a perfect expert of the game, but I wanna make sure you're aware that you can, if you have the energy output with one or two reactors, that's very small size, you can keep flying. I've been flying around at 200% for 
pretty much ever, and I've still got 16 energy per second coming in. Please be aware, you don't have to limit yourself that way. Now, if you want to regenerate all your shields, you get hurt really badly and you want to make sure you're regenerating very quickly. Uh, maybe reducing other ones down so you have more energy going around might affect it, but it doesn't seem to go past your 200% limit if you put the other two down farther. It, it's not like a slider, it's literally limiters, okay? Let's move on to the next tip. The next tip covers tiers in equipment. Now, I want to make sure you understand how they work. Now, under here, under this station, there's a perfect example. There is a Debris Analyzer 2, and there's a Debris Analyzer 3. They're both white, but they do different things. The one I have currently equipped is over here. The one I'm looking at is here. So right now, right now I have currently equipped the green one, Debris Analyzer 3.0 Tier 1. Or Tier 2, rather. Not Tier 1. White is Tier 1. Tier 2 is green. Tier 3 is blue. Tier 4 is purple. Tier 5 is orange. You understand. However, the base item does affect this. Now, if you're like, that's kind of confusing. You can usually look at it and just compare the two items if you're, if you're worried. The debris analyzer on the left side of the screen is a 2.0. Scavenging loot is plus 35% loot. The tier 3, which is green, tier 2, does 60%. Let's compare that to the one above it. Now, the one next to it, the debris analyzer 3.0, the base one is a tier 1. It does 50% extra loot. The debris analyzer 3.0 to the right side, which is green, which is tier 2, does the exact same stats, only 20, 10% more for a cumulative 20% higher scavenging loot bonus. That's why you want to look for higher tier items and upgrade those, not go for the basic ones and upgrade those to tier 4 or 5. Remember, Knowing that will save you a bunch of ancient relics, a bunch of crafting, a bunch of mining to find those items or scavenging to get those base components. Okay? Now, let's move on to the next tip. The next tip covers weapon upgrades and tiers like I just did before, but it shows you, I, I don't have an example to show you, but I will explain this. There are items, as you all know, from you've been watching this video pretty much for this point, you will actually see in your hangar, this is my weapons, right? I have a rapid medium laser. I have a white one. Here's a blue one or a purple one. So this one on the right does a Damage of 3.9 and a DPS of 22. That's white. Purple of the exact same one does a 7.8 damage and a DPS of 43. 43 versus 22. Double. More than double. No, I'm sorry. Just shy of double of the white. Now, I only have the white, though, and I really want a purple. Well, since we have the upgrade kits, upgrade kit will be consumed. See in the middle of the screen, it'll tell you what you're going to use. Now, it's a green one. Now it does 26.3 versus 43.9. Now we're going to take the rapid medium laser again, upgrade again. Improved upgrade kit will take that one out. Boom. There we go. I'm not going to burn an ancient relic for this because it'll take, that's it's very rare, but now it's 32.9 DPS versus 43.9 DPS. I'm going to take, now this rapid medium laser is in the right turret right there. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to click equip. And I'm going to move it. As soon as I, I select it again, I'm going to move it to the other turret. That way, they're on the same ship at the same size. They fire the same pretty much rate, but they're a little different. I'm going to change the key. So I'm going to go change key, mouse one, and I'll show you what this looks like. Okay. Now, this is these are my, my Vulcans. They, they, where your mouse is pointing will aim some of your turrets. Some of us fire forward. Now, these are going to be the lasers. See how I have the two red lasers? They're the exact same laser. One's purple, one's blue. Where you fire on your ship matters. Some items can only t t rotate a little bit, making sure they are not all in one turret and overwhelming and you don't have an enemy on the other side can be very important. Making sure you know that there are different tiers will help. Now, those tiers, if you're worried what they are, start with white. There have been gray items. It might be a missed thing from the developer, not really sure. Then they go to green, that's tier two. So white is tier zero. Tier one, I guess, would be gray. Tier two would be green. Blue would be tier three. Purples would be tier four. Tier five are orange. If you found any orange, you're very lucky. There's not a lot of them around. You're very, very, very done really well. Do not sell it, do not scrap it, keep it. You'll love it, okay? Do everything you can to get an orange. Purples too. Now, let's move on to the next tip. 
covers how to actually it's rock paper shotgun basically and here how that works is very simple under equipment there are weapons there are many kinds of weapons there are point defense lasers there's cannons there's lasers there's missiles there's vulcans there's um point defense weapons all kinds of stuff is in here one will be the counter to another a laser up close the fires burst will be countered by missiles from range that go like crazy vulcans are basically mini guns or auto cannons for your ship they do ignore shields you can actually if you have enough auto can oh sorry um vulcans you can fire an enemy ship if he has maximum shields you, he'll have 100 percent shields when his hull explodes and there you go lasers have to cut through the shields and then cut through the body people that have a tremendous amount of damage but don't can't fire long term because they don't have heat sinks or cooling are negated by people that have other barriers giant shield barriers that pop up for a few seconds or repair drones that fly around them very quickly repairing them so while the enemy is like oh god i, I threw a, a giant amount of weaponry down range i'm overheated you can now slowly beat the hell out of them while you're also getting repaired every single item has a counter item to it somewhere you just have to find what it is okay let's move on to the next tip the next tip has to go with spacing and turrets and if you're going to buy a new ship because you go to trade and go into ships you will see all the ships on the station they are not all the same there are requirements that you should know like when it says down there crew at the very bottom it says locked buy and equip it to unlock space occupied passengers are how many people you can hold the one above that I'm going to draw your attention to, it says crew 11, four required. If you don't have four crew members and you buy this ship, you cannot fly the ship. The ship will perform very badly, okay? So make sure you're prepared for that with what you need to put in there, okay? Just please be aware. But also, if you're like, I want some more information, I don't even know what the turret layout is. Press shift, left shift, and it'll show you the turrets and the layouts. Now anything, as you can see right here, there are little turrets at the very wing tips. They are unlimited in space. They are limited by how much, if you look on this, weapon says 16 on weapons, okay? The 16 is across the whole ship, but those twos that, that you are seeing all over are turrets that can only have two size in them. Some point defense lasers are 0.5. I believe there's weapons that are 0.25, and you can cram a lot of them in there. Your gunners can be assigned to a turret slot, and they will take control of your turrets. So make sure you know what's in the turrets before you try to say, I'll just assign my gunner. It will matter. It will affect you. Having all of your weapons on one side of the ship means that if an enemy approaches on the other side, you can't fire through your own ship to get to them sometimes. So making sure you have a balance of, like, let's say one laser on one side, a laser on the other, a, a Vulcan on one side, a Vulcan on the other, whatever you want to do. Or if you're on a ship that has a lot of items in the dead center middle you can rotate the whole ship towards them with a lot of gyroscopes and make sure you know where your weak spots are your enemy will find it he will go hmm i'll either go to the back of your ship or i'll go to the side and i'll try to snipe you during combat make sure you have that in mind make sure you keep it and you look where your items are if you're like i don't know where they are and what they do go to your hangar go to your ship weapons select the weapon it'll show you where on the ship it's located and all you got to do is if it's here you click here if it's here, you click here. Do whatever you want to do. Move it wherever you want and experiment. Then, and this is important, as soon as you leave the station, save the game, go off the station, and fire your weapons a few times. See how it works. There are heat levels in here, too. That's part of our next tip. Let's move on to that one. Now, one thing you might want to know, there's going to be overheating for a lot of weapons. I'm gonna, now, if you look right here on my ship, you can see each turret is represented visually. As this thing fires... Because there's an extra extra laser on the one side, you're seeing a little green bar turn blue. Now it's overheated, it's not firing at all. How do you stop that? Well, there's actually something in the game to actually do that already without having to buy extra gear. You can even do it on, in the fly on, in combat. Go to your ship, go to your weapons. You can see the weapon represented. There's a, th a button right here called Change Delay. What we're going to do, we're going to go to our rapid medium laser, this one right here, and we're going to change the delay to 0.25. This one here, I moved it over. I think I did, yeah, I moved it over to the turret by mistake. So instead of selecting there, I should select there. So this laser is delayed by 0.25 sec two seconds from after it fires. 
So all we're doing, let's say it fires at one second, every one second. Now it's 1.25 seconds, even if you hold down the trigger until it fires again, meaning you've given it a 25% hold of your horses. So what you can do is you can make both of your weapons have a delay. I'm in this case because this weapon is getting overheated on the other side because there's two um, two of them in the same spot. They're not in the same spot. They're across from each other. So with that delay over here, this bright laser, actually I'll make the bright laser have a delay of 33, 0.33 seconds. The delay can go all the way up to one whole second or 0.75 seconds, but after that it doesn't go, okay? If you are having a lot of problems in combat and you're like, I'm overheating all the time, put the delay on, you won't even notice it, okay? I think that'll work pretty well. Let's go take a look. Notice how it's, it's changed the rate of fire, but the, the laser is taking a very long time now to overheat compared to before. Okay, if it's still overheating, you're like, I don't like that, I can still do it again, press G again. Go to your left side and put a delay higher on the burst light laser because it doesn't have much range. Notice how we're firing and the thing is barely moving. It's not, in fact, it's not moving really that much. Only when the other two fire does it go up higher. Okay? Keep that in mind. Delays help and they will save you if you have all these amazing weapons and you can't fire them because you have no heat sinks or your ship is too small to be able to put more heat efficient stuff on, like let's say heat sinks or um, coolers. Well, one way you can do it is put the small delays on there. I didn't know about that until it was, told, it was told to me. I think it'll help a lot of you. Let's go to the next tip. The next section of tips covers ship enhancements. A lot of you don't even know this is a thing. I didn't really know it either until it was pointed out to me. So we're going to go to the station. We're going to go to our hangar. You have to do this on the station. As far as I'm aware, you cannot do it normally in space. Go to your hangar. Sorry, go to crafting, not your hangar. I apologize. Go to your crafting menu. Down here, it opens up three different new tabs. Ship enhancements is one of them. Each ship has a certain amount of enhancement slots. Now, the way these work, you cannot put an item in the slot and pull it out. You have to rip it out and destroy it. So... If you put something into a slot for a ship, you are not going to get it back enhancement wise. However, they can make a big difference. So right here, there's a cargo plus four, not 5%. Since my cargo is only 67, plus four means I believe I'll have 71 when we're done. We're going to build this one. I saved it for you guys. Three base components, one fine component. I have 20 fine components. I can build it. There you go. It's already in there. Remember, it's not going to pop down you and you slide it over. No, no, no. It'll appear right there. To remove it, it goes away, it doesn't come back. So now we have cargo space plus four. It, did has, it has no drawbacks, but one thing I saw that I really like is weapon heat generation. Oh, ancient, ancient relic detected, I'm sorry. For one second, well, I gotta get this, because I told you, they're rare, I meant it. They are very rare. You see it popping by, I got it. Now, I'm gonna go back and fix the next part of it. Um, we're gonna craft the other one to show you that it makes a difference. I'm going to go to crafting, ship enhancement, and I see down here, weapon cooling plus 5 per second, or weapon heat generated minus 10%. You have to make a determination what's better for you. I can't give you a one-size-fits-all solution for this. If your weapon is doing 100 heat and it's 10% cooling, that means it's doing 90 heat. Great. If it's plus 5 cooling weapon per second base, the weapon generation, if you have 15 weapons firing, 10% will be better than the other one. So we're going to build this one. Now, you can go over here and do almost anything you want. 4% crew efficiency is if you're trying to train your people. It's very high tier 3. Weapon, armor, plus 150. Armor, plus 10% on top of that. It takes thermal regulators. I'd say for your first ships, tier 1s and tier 2s are more than capable until you get a very... If your ship isn't over $100,000, I wouldn't do past tier 2. You can do whatever you want. If you have a tremendous amount of stuff and you believe in your ability to go find stuff, do what you want. But there, down here, there are things like built-in collector beam. I would say that there will be a, in the tips at the end of the video that are like spoilers, I'm going to say something about that. I, don't, I think, I actually forget, I'll just say it here. If you do a built-in collector beam, a collector beam takes one size. All right. Now you're like, what does that matter? Well, one size means you have one extra size for another piece of equipment. Could be pretty good. 
What if you need a big giant reactor and you can only put a large in for four space, but you need five for a huge? Well, that one space by the collector beam being in the ship enhancement slot instead of in your size slot can make you not have to get rid of another shield recharger or something along those lines or maybe something else. Battle computers, by the way, do not take any size. They are zeros. Thank God, at least the developer was like, I'm not going to make it be that much of a bitch because people would take, hold off debris analyzers and loot gatherers. No, no, no. He's very nice about that. He made it where... Just upgrade it and put it in your ship. It doesn't have to take space. Thank God. So we're going to build a, and I know some of you miners are going to want to hear this one, cargo space and mining laser damage can be in here. Uh, if your lasers are overheating, weapon heat generation, weapon cooling. I'm going to go for myself. Um, hmm, I think I'm going to do weapon heat, generation, ge weapon heat generated minus 10% across the whole ship. I'm going to build it. Now it's in. All of my weapons now generate 10% less heat across the board. So, we turn. You can watch the little, laser, little thing over here. There's almost no heat. Pretty long time, huh? Make sure you know how to get to ship enhancements. How is that again, Ben? How did you get there? Well, you press G, you go to crafting menu, you go to ship enhancements, and it's in here. Please remember, though, if you're, I, I could take out this cargo space here, there's not a better one, though, in Tier 2 for cargo. It, based upon the ship design, there will be different ones and tiered things for you from what I've been told. I'm not sure about that, but I want to make sure you're aware of it. Okay? Make sure you use your ship enhancement slots. Some ships that are yellow, or sorry, green or blue can have two, three, or four ship enhancement slots. If you see a blue item or a blue ship on the market to buy when you go to the trade area. Like right now, look, see? It says Interceptor. It has a couple bonuses built in. Independent though, ship enhancement slots plus one. This one down here, ship enhancement slots on the course area is plus one, and then independent plus one, that means it has four. You can really stack up some very interesting things, which makes almost every single playthrough for every single ship based upon how you build, not even to mention the custom weapons you can do down here Almost unique every single time. Almost. Not fully, but almost. Okay? Let's move on to the next tip. Before I finish that section with a really good uh, finisher. That's a good way to put that, man. I'm really tired. I'm sorry. Um, do not fall into the, just five more minutes, one more item. Five more minutes, one more item. A lot of these items down here in equipment. Now, this is what they're selling on the market. They're all white items. Okay? Nothing wrong with that. There's like large expansion module plus 30% ship mass for 10% cargo space. I did 15% blue for 7.2%. Now, a lot of you are going to be like, well, I can just take every single item with all the stuff I mined up or I gather and I can make everything blue right away. And you're right, you can. The problem with this, though, comes down to like every item here, every single item you see can be upgraded. You don't have to have any whites or greens on your ships. You can go for blues, purples, and oranges. Now, the problem with that is this game already is massive. And if you're this far in the video, you're probably like, oh my God, there's so much stuff to do. This game is unapologetically trying to be a time suck. And that's a good thing. Games are meant to waste time. They're not meant to be like, I'm the most perfect, perfect person ever. I can be so efficient, I don't even have to play the game. That's not how it works. It's a wonderful time suck, but be careful. If you're going to get to a higher tier ship very soon, don't fall into the rat race of running on the treadmill a million miles an hour trying to get a tier one or two or three ship to all purples when the next tier up might not use those size of weapons. Like right now, large nuclear reactor can only go, if you look at their minimum ships class is a Corvette. It doesn't work on a yacht or a shuttle. Okay? It needs bigger ships so some of those items from your first ship that's a tier two yacht will not work actually none of them will work on the high end stuff unless you try to shoehorn it in it doesn't work like if you're putting like a small pea shooter blaster on and you have giant capital class turrets what's the point okay so make sure you don't fall into that it's very easy to go i'm gonna upgrade everything because i'm so awesome and that's fine but why would you if you're gonna sell the ship and all the equipment on it shortly now you could have the argument that you'll take the ship and give it to one of your allies because you can take crew members and let them pilot your ships for no money they don't take any cash that is part of your they, you have a hiring cost and they don't take any bounty percentage and they don't take a monthly charge they probably should but i don't think it really matters 
But that lets us go into the next section. So let's move on to the next tip. I'm going to try to pick up the pace a little bit in the next section because I know I'm getting very long on this video. So we're going to go for crew members in this section. And the first one is Mercs versus crew. Mercs, if I, uh, you can hire Mercs at Mercenary Hideouts or anyone who's passing by you. You can go to them and say, you target them with this little cursor. As you know, you're looking, you're, you're firing this way. You right click on them. Oops. You can right click on them and it'll select them and you press the X key and they will go, hey, although you can tell them, hey, I'm going to extort you or you can say, are you for hire? And they go, they'll give you an offer. The offer might be, I want 40% of your money. Don't do that. It might be 30%, it might be 20%. You're up to you. That's a mercenary. Every single kill you get while they're in your fleet, they'll take a tremendous amount of money. They're not worth it for giant long campaigns. They are worth it if you're like, oh man, I have a big fight coming up. I better use this guy. But make sure, like my mercenary right now, he's launching right now. He takes money every time we kill anything, okay? He's somewhat worth it, but there's another way around it. So let's move on to the next tip and I'll show you what I mean. Crew members are people you find in craftable, sorry, in uh, escape pods. Escape pods will give you people like right here in your passenger slot. Now these people will have a, there's different kinds called specialized or diversified or balanced. And these people, let's see if I have someone who's balanced. Diversified, diversified, balanced. This guy, uh, it'll t explain this in a tool tip, how it works. I suggest you read it. If you're this far in the video, I wanna kinda keep going very fast. But you could, there's a few ways to make these people better. Emma right now is auto on gunnery. I could take her and click this one button, set control to no control. She, even though she's in a gunner, now what'll happen? She will never fire a gun. She will sit there in the gun and, and go, hmm. And then she'll be gaining experience the entire time. This is a quick and easy way to level her up. So please make sure you know that if you're trying to have a big crew or a big fleet of people, you can do mercs for a quick little bump up and then you're gonna make no money for a long period of time. The better way is to get crew members or passengers who never have a monthly charge and never take any percentage of your bounties and slowly put them into ships. They, however, they are stupid. They will die. You'll be loading a lot, okay? And you have to give them the ships they, they get. So this shark I'm using or the ship before, a hound, I could take that ship because the hound does the gear on the hound didn't really work on the shark. I didn't know that when I took it apart. I could take the entire ship, say, no, no, stay as you are, and take my people and dump it in there for her to use or them to use. I don't know if they need crew members on top of that. I'm not 100% sure how that works. I will try to find more information to get back to you. Let's move on to the next tip. Like I said, crew members die a lot if they, um, are in control of a ship. Like you'll be sitting there just floating around space and even with your, you can set, assign them roles, mining, damage dealer, repair. You can say configure behavior. What do you want to do? What kind of tactics? Strafe and fire? You want to hit and run? You want to alternate between the two? Ship collision, are you going to avoid it? Are you going to ignore it? Um, you're, there's going to be keys. You're going to do all kinds of different things here. Emergency warp one HP below. What percentage do you want them to warp out at? Do you want them never to warp out at? And if they warp out, You'll be able to, event after combat ends, go to a star base and say, hey, warp back in, and they'll warp back in on you. There's a lot of good quality of life controls, but even with all of that, your guys might get stuck, they might have no energy, they might be facing the wrong way, something goes wrong, and they explode, and you're going to be like, ah, oh, god damn it, that ship had so much good gear on it, and you're going to have to load. So you either have to wait until the point where you have a lot of good gear and a lot of buildable craft items to put on that on that ship to give them so they have a better chance to survive or you have to save scum a lot it's up to you let's move on to the next section the next section covers long-term planning now you can do a few things but i'll make sure you know a few things you can do that'll make your life a little easier long term you can store ships for different roles in stations however the stations are destructible so make sure wherever you park your ship and your gear in the station or items you're going to drop in their hangars are relatively secure. If it's a war zone on a border and it's, the, the, there's fleets being launched all the time, probably not the best place to launch your docking area. A, a basic quiet system where there's not a lot of chance, at like a level four or five or six, something like that, really low, where you could go in and blow everyone away because you're so amazing, may not be bad to park a ship if you can. The problem is 
you might not have that option. So keep that in mind. And if you know what I mean by not having that option, it's going to be because your ship is too big and to move it over and then get a shuttle back can be really annoying, hectic. It may not be worth your time. You might have to just roll the dice and hope. Okay? Keep that in mind. Let's move on to the next tip. Long term, some of you are going to fall into the plant, the problem of hoarding. And what's going to happen is in your, in your hangar, you're going to have all this gear. Like even I have a little bit of it. Well, you have all this gear that is not bad. I even have some whites here, um, but the white items are useless right now. So I'm just going to scrap it quick. But the problem comes from hoarding. And hoarding um, is not really needed. Okay, you can buy a lot of items. If you have a blue or a green item you see, or a purple especially, buy it immediately. Whites are not needed. You can find them almost anywhere. Now, if you need them in a pinch, you can have a few, but don't move a bunch of gear. Don't be hoarding a, a tre tremendous amount. And the reason I say that will be part of our next section, basically, research and blueprints. Let's go to the next tip, and I'll explain. The next section are research and blueprints and, and dovetail in from the last, last tip. If you hoard a lot... Yeah, you'll have a lot of gear, but it's going to be usually useless. Tier, lower tier stuff, you don't need too much. It's not perfect. You can use it for some of the other ships. If you want to do the fleet combat, compared to the lone wolf approach, perfectly fine. However, every time you scrap a single item, you have a higher chance to learn the next tier for a blueprint. Let me show you what I mean. These mining lasers, if I scrap them, well, right now you can see them. It says blueprint known, 0% to tier 2. Now, if I destroy this weapon, actually, let me see what I can do here up, up here. Um... Weapons. Mm, is there one here? The answer is no. But I'll buy. I'll buy the simple mining laser. Okay. The simple mining laser. I know zero percent of tier two. I'm gonna research it quick or scrap it quick. Now, what happened was I got twelve experience from scrapping, and I'm gonna buy another one. Now, I'm not. I don't have to buy it, but because I did that, now the blueprint is now on thirty-three percent to tier two. And that's why I want to make sure you know that hoarding is good, but if you learn the blueprints, you don't have to hoard anymore and look for items. You can just build them yourself. If you go to crafting and you go down to um, ship enhancements, no, not ship enhancements, I'm sorry, blueprints. If you turn on weapons, you will have, like, where's the heavy, where's the mining thing? I know it's here and I can't see it. Simple mining laser. Now simple mining laser takes two base components and two microchips. That's all it takes. You can build the whites yourself and upgrade them right away if you want to. And sometimes it's worth doing the upgrade more than it is to build the higher tier. However, for burst laser, for, it doesn't, all, by the way, it also doesn't allow you from as far as I'm aware, once you learn the higher tier of an item, you can no longer build the one below it. So if I have a tier four burst light laser, oh, it can, it can, oh, that's nice. I'm wrong, that's great. So you can build it wherever you want, but you can, you can see the components down here, thermal regulators for tier four. Now, a, a blue one only takes one thermal regulator. So you have to determine what you want to do. And sometimes you're going to have to do the math that an upgrade kit, which takes like nothing, might be worth buy, building the white instead, tier one, base component two microchips, or compared to going from a blue from a green. So a green goes up and adds one thermal regulator. Is a thermal regulator worth doing that over an improved upgrade kit, which takes, is it here? I'm going to say improved upgrade kits take two refined metal the tier where is it the burst light laser takes two thermal regulators no i'm sorry tier three takes one thermal regulator so refined metal now thermal regulators i'm trying to do this off, off my head and i can't remember it thermal regulator Thermal regulator takes two refined metal too. So the, there are a few instances in this game where certain items from going to building the tier two component is actually not worth it and making a white one into a blue or into a green will actually be cheaper with an upgrade kit. Please just keep that in mind. Just keep, take an eye on a gander. At it. I did that a few times and chat caught me so hard on Twitch it wasn't funny. So I forgot to let you know. Let's move on to the next. The next part is taking rewards from missions. If you go to a lobby, you'll always have a mission from the mission board you can do. Like I'm gonna take this mission right here, keeping the peace, regional delivery. Now some of these, you will have rewards, okay? Now, 
if you do missions, they're very quick, and there's no reason whatsoever not to take every mission you see unless it requires obtain, like, an item that you're not going to get. Like, this one takes 15 fruit and vegetables to turn over to this station, and I'll be able to choose a cloaking device, a speed booster Mark II, or a medium laser beam, none of which I need. They're all whites. However, taking that item and scrapping it, even though I'm going to get paid as well, like, this mission will give me 2,600 experience, 3,000 credits, and one of these items. I don't need them all, they're all white ones, but I, let's say I want to upgrade it, or I want to scrap it and learn the blueprint or percentage towards it. That might be worth it to me. It also might be worth it to you. So that's why I'm telling you. Let's move on. Uh, okay, one other thing. If you have all that gear, um, money moves very quickly. Credits are pretty much universal. And being able to sell stuff can sometimes be worth it more than moving a lot of stuff around because Trading will make up, make up for a lot. I don't want, I'm trying not to spoil a lot of stuff for you guys, but you can put a lot of weapons and gear into your storage. Money, however, you don't have to organize it. You're going to say, I want to build that, I want to go there. Having a mining ship to go get, gather a lot of resources can be very good. I'm sorry I'm getting out of alignment here for a minute on this, on this video. It's getting very long, and I'm trying to figure out if I want to cut ahead and do a second video or not. Um, if you can... If you let me know down below if you feel like it, if you want me to do these longer form videos, like 45 minutes to an hour, or you want me to bust them up into two 30 minute long videos. Most people like the 30 minute video format, but then I have to stretch it across. So I'm gonna chop a few things out and we're gonna go on to the next tip. Next tip is in a section for geology for miners. I wanna make sure you know how it works. Press C, go to knowledge, go to geology, and there are three different uh, sections in that column. The top one is blue, the middle one is red, the bottom one is green. This corresponds to asteroid colors. And if you want to know how to get those items in each column, you go to that asteroid, blue, red, or green, and you'll have the, that's where those items come from. Okay? I did not know that, and the more you geology mine up, the quicker you'll get upgrade stuff. If you're trying to go for the perks, like get exploration at level 25 before everyone else, what they mean by level 25 is these skills in here. I try to do explorer. I got tied into geology, and next thing I know, I made this a mining character. Didn't mean to, but I needed gear to upgrade to the level two and three tier items, and I wasn't getting it, so I did it quick, quote unquote. Four hours later, I had level 30 geology um, from level like two. So do what you want, but I just want to make sure you know how that worked. Let's go on to the next tip. The last tip is about perks. And perks, I'm going to show these to you. You can choose one perk in the, in the start of the game. I chose commerce trading, global trading plus 1.25%. That means everything I ever buy or sell, I get 1.25% discount or 1.25% 1, 1. more money from it. Now, do I think that's the best? It's up to you to decide. But I made sure that the perks I'm looking at, I only started with one. I think Trial by Fire was 10, Defeat Enemy Ships, Weapon Damage was 1%. And then you slowly start, like complete the tutorial and choose PMC Faction or become honored with the PMC as out as his background. Mining Speed plus 18%. Starting Credits plus 1,500. All of these will give you little things. And I encourage you to go Achievement Hunting for perks. They will make it where you, when you start off a playthrough or if you want to make your ship a little better, if you know these perks exist and you're like, I want plus one agility, which makes my, t my ship turn a little faster, all you got to do is explore 10 sectors really quickly. Since you know that how big sectors are now, you can go for a very small sector, fly around really quickly, unlock plus one agility on every ship you own, including capitals. And they do help. Strafe speed plus 1.8%. Escape from an asteroid rush alive. Gold rush. Mining speed plus 12%. I mean, a lot of this will affect you. The one I want to show you, though, is hard worker. Research, reach 25 in geology before having 25 in any other knowledge. These are for everything from exploration to trading, mining, combat. That lets you just get this achievement. And then this one, because I have this, collector beam range plus 18%. Collector beam speed, how quickly it pulls items in your loot box, plus 30. Maybe that's worth it to you. Go find out what the perks are and use them to your advantage. Let's move on to the next tip. The next tip is actually letting you know that the, the next tips are going to be very, uh, 
a little spoilerish, a little twink y or tweaky or whatever you want to use for it. Like, if you're someone who goes, I want to be very, very efficient and not waste time, you probably want to keep watching. If you're someone who's like, I don't want to have any spoilers at all, I want to stop, you can fast forward to the section where it says outro and ending. There'll be a chapter for that, okay? Okay, I'm going to put this up on screen. There's going to be a little thing over here with all warning to make sure you don't keep going unless you want to have it spoiled for you, okay? And let's move on to the next tip. These tips, I'm reiterating again, can make the game a little easier for you. It might be too easy, so I want to make sure you're understanding. Now, hey, I gave you an option to leave or to skip the outro. Do whatever you want, but right here under trade, what I've been seeing, there are quickly, very, very quick ways to make a lot of money and you can never fire your, your guns in anger besides the tutorial and make, I've seen someone up to four or five million dollars. I saw someone up to, I think, almost uh, two billion dollars in the first 10 hours of gameplay. How? How, Ben? How does that work? You asked for it. Well, you can trade in goods that are very expensive. And there are some goods like platinum, which are 2,600 per unit. When you find them at cheap for 2,000 a unit, and you can carry 300 in your hold or so much, and then go sell it for 4,000 a unit because you're lucky enough to keep looking because you, bought, you find a trader codex, you can very quickly know what you're doing to get a lot of cash. However, it booshes your level up very quickly and makes it where other things in the starter systems are pretty much useless to you, but you have a lot of money and there's not a lot of reasons not to do it that way. So if you wanna make it convenient wise, I would become a very good trader, see how it works, and when you go in here, under trading, it seems to be the precious metal group. Silver, gold, platinum are very, very, very expensive and they bring in a lot of money. Any item for a thousand normal credits and higher, you might want to go trade it in. You can trade anyway, but you can trade, you can go buy 400 gold very quickly and go trade it somewhere else if you have the right kind of cargo stuff. Now, would I do that in a war zone with a ship with no weapons because you invested everything into your cargo hole? That's up to you. But now you know about it. And it's a quick way if you're moving around to say, hey, even with my crappy Trader Codex 1.0, the average price is 1,004. This one's 983. If I buy it, there's a high chance I'll be able to sell it for a little bit more almost easily. Would I max yourself out on it? That's your up to you. But if my cargo is 24 out of 71, I might decide, well, you know, these things take one space. I could very easily buy 40 until I have to go dump it somewhere. And then when you do dump it, even if you get a little bit, couple credits each, dump it and keep doing it. It's, it's free money on top of, because you're gonna be moving anyway. But make sure you have space for charges, meaning energy charges, ammo, and the ability to pick up loot that you might want. That's why I'm not saying max yourself out all the time, okay? Let's move on to the next tip. The so next tip, you can fly around in a very fast ship and make yourself very fast, very quick, and uncatchable almost from level three. All you have to do is go down into your hangar, go to your equipment, and you have to stack things like thrusters, um, uh, what do you call it, impulse drives, and maybe a little bit of shields here and there so you can move around very quickly. The more impulse drives you have, the max speed goes up higher and higher and higher. You're also gonna want a speed booster. So if you push down left shift, you'll actually go faster. So they don't stack, I don't think, but it does, does not say you can't have more than one. So you can try to make a very, very, very fast little ship. The reason being, you can bounce around little station systems like this and go, I go very slow but I'm trying to fight things, explore things, scavenge things. If you're not looking to pick up any loot, you can make a very fast shuttle or a very fast class two um, ship, run around quickly, get a lot of experience, and not even get in combat from what I can tell. Like, people launch missiles at you, you can outrun the missiles. They fire a laser, you're out of range of the laser within seconds. It's up to you if you want to play that way, but if you're trying to get the achievement explorer first, you might want to just build up enough, maybe trade a little bit, get a little bit of money, probably at this point, $35,000, $40,000, and get a very quick ship, buzz around, get the achievement, end the playthrough, go to the next one, and have it unlocked. Your choice, do what you want to do. Let's move on to the next tip. The 
explanation I gave you about how to mine and how to trade a lot of minerals, you might want to know that with a very fast ship and going to the asteroid fields in your map, one, two, it has to be marked as an asteroid field because what happens, asteroid fields that are marked as opposed to unmarked asteroid fields, which I think there's one right here, if you fly through them, there will always be one, usually one to four crystals, depending on the size of the asteroid field, that is floating there. If you're looking for upgrades or money, you can buzz them with a fast ship, collect them and go to the next system. While you're exploring anyway, it might be another way to make some money very quickly or have enough crystals for a turn in missions for faction uh, standings. Okay, let's move on to the next tip. It's very specific. There is a mission for the Proxima Mining Company called Keeping the Peace. These quests will give you an option. They're the mining faction. They'll give the option for a miner's laser. The miner's laser is a three slot or a three size mining laser that does a low that does 13.3 damage to asteroids. 13.3 times damage to asteroids. So you can upgrade this thing really high. And thank you, Dragon PC, if you're watching for this clip. And you can start mining astronomically fast but you have to go do remember keeping the peace missions for the proxima mining company so you go to the proxima stations look for missions like you go when you dock like this you will look for mission board and in here it'll say keeping the peace like right here's a keeping the peace this is a civilian station It's not the normal one but sometimes when you accept it you'll receive you'll see what you're going to get they don't tell you but if you go kill it sometimes you'll get that laser sometimes you'll get plunder from it Either way, it'll work out. It'll push you ahead very, very, very fast, especially if you're looking for it. Okay, let's move on to the next tip. Now, if you've made it this far, you're one of the very few because usually, I mean, except for the other Sweet Transit video list I did, I did, I did two lists for the Sweet Transit series. Um, funny enough, 70% of people watch that all the way through. I have never had those kind of numbers. So if you made it this far, you're awesome. So give me a second here. I'm going to change this for one second. I wanted to give you a little bit of a uh, kind of look you in the eye as best I could and say thank you for coming this far. Now, there will be more of these lists if you want them to be. Those of you that have watched this point, you're probably the people that I'm, look I'm talking to, not the people that clicked on the video and said, oh, whatever, I don't care, I'm gone. Those people are long gone. They're never going to watch me again, no big deal. But you were nice enough to do so. So one, I want to say thank you very much for doing that. You're very, very kind and I want to say, hey, Thanks a lot for letting me do this kind of venture where I actually changed my career back seven years ago from being a contractor to being a streamer slash YouTuber. So if I've hopefully impressed you enough, not impressed you like in my abilities, I have no abilities, but if I was able to explain in a way that made you go, hey, I know about this game now, I feel like I can make a more informed decision as a consumer, maybe I wanna buy it, maybe I wanna wish list it, maybe I wanna avoid it, whatever, that's up to you. And hopefully with all that information, if I impressed you with that knowledge that I dug out of the game, you'll debate the idea, only debate it, of hitting the subscribe button, okay? If you want to hit other buttons, that's completely up to you and I appreciate you if you decide to. If you don't, that's fine too. But thank you and the more of you that let me know in the comments if you want to see more of this series or another series, I am trying to do it. I'm, I'm working on a Captain of Industry video right now of the exact same kind. I'm working on some other games, trying to figure out if I want to play them just like this because I don't do these lists for every game I can find. I do them for games I enjoy and I play and I put in more than 10 hours. I've already got 20 hours in this game and I look like it's going, it looks like I'm going to play like 100. It's just so good. Now, you can make up your mind about it yourself with what you saw and hopefully it'll determine if you want to go any farther in this video. I know some people have already clipped off. Those of you that are still here, if you want to add a boy, add a girl, or add a person, do me a favor. Say one of your, say your favorite Sesame Street Muppet in the comments below. And I'll give you an add a boy, an add a girl, or an add a person. You can just tell me what you want. Say, I want to add a boy. I want to add a girl. Or whatever. Say, Grover, add a boy. And say, uh, Big Bird, add a girl. Or Snuffleupagus, add a, per, add a spouse. Or whatever you want to call yourself. I don't mind. Thank you very much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully, you'll debate the idea of uh, doing what I asked. If you want to see more videos, suggest other games you want to see down below. I'm trying to focus on complex games of this nature. Um, captive industry, fa factory games, simulation games, complex games, forex games, not yet, but soon. So thank you very much. I'm kind of rambling right now, but I think I can say thank you very much for your time. 
Um, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. There's a playlist in our channel if you want to see other stuff. I'm going to be doing more and more of this, and I am doing this game on Steam if you want to join us. There will also be in the section down below a link to the game. You can go do it there. In the Steam page for the game, you can go join the Discord. The developer is very, very active. And if you're polite and make a suggestion about the game, he will take it seriously. All right? Hopefully you have a wonderful time. Hopefully I get to see some of you again. If you made it this far in the video, you're one of the ultra rares. Most people click. As soon as I go into the whole like, outro thing, most people leave. So thank you so very much for sticking around. You're very one of the few who's awesome. I'm probably talking to less than 1% of the video right now, and that's why I want to say thank you so much. You let this older man do a very awesome job. And when I say awesome job, I mean a career that's fun. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video. Good night.